welcome back to the channel dear friends and in today's video we are going to demonstrate FECO emulsification in a soft cataract in which we implanted a multi-piece hydrophobic IOL. So by now the side port incisions have been made and we've stained the anterior capsule with tripan blue and we are refilling the anterior chamber with viscoelastic substance which is 2% HPMC and we are coating the cornea with the same to enhance visualization. Now we go ahead with the superonasal 2.8 mm clear corneal incision and the next step would be to raise a capsular flap with a 26 gauge bent cystotome. My preferred technique is to raise the flap with the cystotome and to bring the flap around with the utrada forceps as I find that in my hands I have more control over the flap and the diameter of the capsular axis when I use a utrada forceps. So we've now achieved a 5.5 mm diameter capsular axis and we move ahead with the hydro procedure and we complete a hydro dissection, compress the nucleus in the center to bring the fluid way forward and rotate the nucleus with the hydro cannula to break all the corticocapsular adhesions and now we move ahead with the phaco emulsification. As you now see that I begin this surgery with a trenching maneuver, I'm using 70% phaco power with about 20 cc per minute aspiration flow rate and about a 30 millimeters of mercury vacuum. After rotating the nucleus for 180 degrees, I enlarge the trench on the other side and begin to deepen the trench with downslope sculpting towards the center and upslope when I'm in the periphery of the nucleus. And with the Sinsky hook and my phaco tip, I'm attempting a lateral separation. But because this is a soft cataract, I'm not getting very good hold and very good purchase. So I rotate the nucleus again and decide to do a stop and chop and try to chop this part of the nucleus with my Sinsky hook. Now this is more of a mechanical chop and I do manage to get a slight separation and then rotate the nucleus further again to try and complete the separation of the heminuclei. As you can see now with this lateral maneuver, I have been able to separate the heminuclei and prolapse the first fragmented nucleus piece out of the capsular bag. At this point in the surgery we are using 50% pulsed phaco power with 350 mm mercury vacuum and a 35 cc per minute flow rate. Dear friends, I find nucleus handling slightly more tricky when I'm dealing with soft cataracts as compared to the harder ones because in a grade 3 and above cataract the hold that you get onto the nuclear fragments with your phaco tip is exceptionally good whereas in a soft cataract you have a tendency of having a cheese wiring effect in which the phaco tip goes right through the material of the nucleus and could cause a post occlusion surge and hence a posterior capsular rent Therefore, we have to do a really slow motion phaco emulsification when we're dealing with soft cataracts. And as you can see in this case, I'm spending more time with the nucleus handling as I normally do in a harder grade cataract. So once the epinuclear plate is also out, we now go ahead with bimanual irrigation and aspiration. Dear friends, if you observe very closely, in my left hand I am holding my irrigation cannula and in the right I have the aspiration cannula. The irrigation cannula is of 21 gauge and the aspiration cannula that I use is of a thinner 22 gauge. This ensures that the amount of fluid going into the eye is always greater than the amount of fluid that comes out of the eye. And this prevents posterior capsular trampolining and the potential complication of a posterior capsular rent. The bimanual cannuli that I'm using have been manufactured by Epsilon India. I have no financial interest in the products manufactured by the same. And now that all the cortical matter is out, I go ahead with the polishing of the posterior capsule. And as you can see, I'm using a sandblasted aspiration cannula, which has a roughened tip and which helps to polish off the remnant epithelial cells from the posterior capsular surface. And this goes a long way in preventing 
uh, the complication of posterior capsular opacification. We're now reinflating the bag with 1.4% sodium hyaluronate cohesive viscoelastic and slightly enlarging the incision because we're planning a three piece IOL implantation. So there was no specific indication of uh, implanting a three piece hydrophobic IOL. In this particular instance, I have just implanted it because I have not implanted one in a long time and to have the skill and the knowledge of how to load and implant a three-piece IOL is a very essential thing for every cataract surgeon to know. Dear viewers, you will immediately notice that the three-piece IOL instantly centers onto the capsular bag. This is the advantage a multi-piece IOL has over a single piece. So even if you're not able to remove all the viscoelastic from the capsular bag in your cataract surgery, the three-piece IOL will always be centered wherein a single piece IOL is at the risk of being decentered because of the blob of viscoelastic that you might leave behind. So as we're removing the cohesive viscoelastic from in front of the IOL, it's important to remove it from behind the IOL as well. And we are now going to attempt to lift the optic and to remove all the viscoelastic from behind it so that the patient does not have any late capsular distension syndromes. This might look like a risky procedure to do, but trust me, it is not and lifting the optic is very simple even for a three-piece IOL. I have made a separate video uh, showing how to load and implant a three-piece IOL and if you've not watched that, I'll share the link in the description box below and you can watch that video on how to load and implant a multi-piece or a three-piece IOL. Now that the surgery is complete, we are hydrating the side port wounds to have a watertight closure of the anterior chamber. And once we've achieved that, this cataract case is concluded. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.